In this video, we're talking about some common defenses to driving on a suspended license in Arizona. In other videos, we've spoken about the fact that driving on a suspended license in Arizona is a class one misdemeanor. It's the highest level misdemeanor that we have, the same as a DUI. So it is serious, it is important that it is addressed appropriately, but it's also important you know that there are a lot of good defenses to it. So in most situations, people charged with driving on a suspended license, it's their first offense. A lot of the time, they don't even know that their license is suspended. And so in that situation, one of the most important things you wanna do is get your license back. So you wanna find out what was suspending it. Was it a lapse in insurance? Was it uh, too many points and you just have to wait past that uh, period of time? Did you have an unpaid parking ticket? There's a number of different ways that it can be suspended, but let's address that. How can you get your license back and reinstated? There are certain provisions under the law that say if it was something simple, like just not paying a, a photo radar ticket or forgetting a court date about a, a parking ticket, if you rectify that, if you go and you pay that off, then the court has some authority to actually dismiss the charge against you. So that's what we're talking about here. When you have a prosecutor dismiss the case or a court or a judge dismiss the case, what you're doing is you're taking your license, you're getting it reinstated, you're solving all of the old problems that caused the underlying suspension, and you're taking it into a prosecutor or to a judge and you're saying, look, this is what happened. I, I had this going on, I fixed it, no more issues, here's proof that my license has been reinstated, would you just go ahead and dismiss the case? Depending on the jurisdictions, there's over 180 courts in Arizona, but many prosecutors will actually just take a look at the case, listen to your explanation and say, all right, that makes sense. This is a paperwork type of a problem. You weren't out there knowingly driving on a suspended license or a revoked license, meaning it's not like you got several DUIs and were still driving a car or that you were, had a multiple number of uh, speeding tickets, but you're still driving. It was just clerical stuff. Stuff got lost in the mail. You just weren't made aware of it. And so they're more inclined to dismiss the case. So the prosecutor has that authority to dismiss the case. The, the law also carves out a, an exception, like I said, for the court and the judge to dismiss the case. If it just has to do with an unpaid ticket and you pay that ticket and reinstate your license, the court also has the authority to dismiss the charge. Now, in some situations, they're not willing to do that. The judge will not be willing to do that. The prosecutor will not be willing to do that. They still wanna get something out of you. They wanna get some money out of you. They want you to have some sort of a penalty. And so what we can do in those situations is take the class one misdemeanor charge, which is very high, it's very serious, and drop it down into a civil violation. In Arizona, there's a civil statute. It doesn't have any points. It's not a moving violation. It's not criminal. And it's basically saying that you forgot your wallet. You did not have valid identification on you at the time. It's called no valid ID. So instead of your license being suspended, it's actually just saying you didn't have a valid license. That doesn't mean that it was a suspended license. It just means you didn't have a license on you. And so you would still pay a fine for that if you get it reduced down to a civil. You'd still pay a fine and you'd still have a little note in the court system that you, were, you pled responsible to a civil ticket. But it's not going to be something that is criminal, it's not gonna have any points on your license, your insurance company should have no issues with that, but it you know it depends on your insurance provider, but it still is something that is a lot less serious, it's not a class one misdemeanor, it's a civil ticket, and so it's a good resolution. In some situations, the negotiating part of these cases doesn't work. If you have multiple driving on suspended license charges, they may in fact be asking for jail time. So they may want you to plead guilty to the driving on a suspended license charge, and go to jail for it. We see this if people have two, three, or four, or more. We've represented people with a dozen driving on suspended license charges. They're gonna want jail out of that because from their perspective, they're saying, this person doesn't have a valid license and they continue to drive on the roadway. And so in order to discourage them from doing that again, they're gonna start asking for jail. Again, a lot of this depends on the judges. A lot of it depends more specifically on the prosecutors, but that if that's the situation, you have to begin preparing your case to go to trial. We have to begin litigating the case. And when we're doing that, what we need to do is focus on whether you actually had knowledge that your license was suspended or revoked, whether you made admissions to that fact, are they going to be able to prove that you were knowingly driving on a suspended license? Something that is important. Did you talk to the officer and say, yeah, I know that I was driving on a suspended license, but I did it anyways. That's an important component of the driving on a suspended license case. The other things we wanna focus on are things like admissibility. What evidence can they get into court? 
Can they get certain MVD documents into court in front of the judge? A lot of uh, prosecutors aren't very good at that. It's called authentic authentication. There are hearsay objections that you can make. And so sometimes it's a little bit difficult for them to actually get the evidence into court. If you have a younger prosecutor or you have a judge who's not real familiar with the rules of evidence, you may be able to keep certain evidence out. And in that case, it may be difficult for the government to prove their case. So you wanna focus on admissibility. What documents can they get in to prove that your license was suspended? They need some sort of evidence. How do they get that into court? How can we keep that out of court? So again, the big goal on a driving on a suspended license case for the vast majority of people is to reduce it from a criminal into a civil. There's a number of ways to do that. Obviously, if the, if the case is dismissed, not gonna be a criminal conviction. If it's reduced down to a civil, you may still pay a fine, but also a much, much better resolution. And then in real kind of more serious situations where people have a history of DOSLs, driving on suspended licenses, we want to really do what we can to mitigate any of the other penalties. So any jail time, any probation, reduce the fines and fees so that we can keep that person out of custody, continue to have them you know, working to support their family or keep them in school. Whatever it is that they're doing with their lives, we want to make sure the damage is absolutely minimized. So if you have been charged with driving on a suspended license, these are just some of the, the defenses that are most often applicable that we see. We are able to get a lot of these resolved to our client satisfaction. We've got a ton of experience with criminal traffic. So if you'd like to come in, give us a call. We'll have you sit down. We'll review your case, review your record, review everything that's going on so that we can employ the best defenses for you and make sure that you get out of this thing without a criminal conviction. Give us a call. We look forward to working with you soon. Thanks for watching.